A big limitation of many AI assistants is that they have no long-term memory. Most AI is stateless. It's like having a conversation with a goldfish. Every interaction is a fresh start. But what if we could change that? What if we could give our AI a brain to store its memories, making it truly state aware? Well, that's what I'm about to do. I'll show you how to build an AI that can remember your conversations using Python and a powerful serverless database. By the end of this short tutorial, you'll have all the code and knowledge to build your own. So to give an AI a memory, we need to connect it to an external database. For every conversation, our code will do two things. First, it will retrieve past conversations to understand the context. And second, it will save the new conversation to learn from it. So before we even create the database, let's look at the blueprint for our AI's memory. So this Python script is setupdatabase.py. Its only job is to create a table in our database. Think of this table as a spreadsheet for the AI's memory. So first we get the environment variable of the database uh, URL and then set up table. So we're going to connect to the Neon database. And then here's the SQL to create a database called conversations. It has a column for the user ID, the user message, the AI response, and the timestamp. It's simple, but it's the functional structure that allows our AI to remember. And then we run the command, we commit it, and then it should be created or it already exists. And then we can just close it and give any errors that come up. So for this code to work, it needs a database to connect to. That was this environment, uh, this environment variable here. So for that, we're going to use Neon. So Neon will give us a full featured Postgres database that is completely serverless, meaning you don't have to worry about managing infrastructure. It's perfect for projects like this. And also Neon is sponsoring this video, but I had already used Neon many times before they sponsored this video. So we'll just head over to neon.tech and sign up for a free account or we can log in. I already have an account. Then once we're logged in, we can create a new project. And then we can just call this anything we want. Like we can call it AI memory. And we can select the region, just select the region closest to our house and create. Now we just need the connection string. So I'll click this connect button. So we can copy this connection string. We don't have to copy the PSQL part and we can put it into our .env file. So in our .env file, we have the database URL, which is the connection string. We're also going to need an OpenAI API key for this project. So you can get that over on the OpenAI website. Now let's get our project set up locally. We're going to need to install a few libraries. We're using Python, so I'm already in my terminal here. And we're going to pip install OpenAI, and then also sci cop g2 binary, and the python.env. The OpenAI is to work with the OpenAI API, python.env, that's to access our environment variable. And this one is a PostgreSQL database adapter for Python. Okay, once we got these installed, and we are, I already put in the environment variable for the database, we can now run our setup script to create the memory table in our new Neon database. So I'll just do Python setupdatabase.py. Okay, it's now success, it's created successfully or it already exists. So I'm back on Neon in the project dashboard and our project actually has a different name now, it's stateful. I'm gonna go to this, the tables tab here and we can now see our conversations table that has been created. So here is our main script, statefulai.py. Let's break down how it works. So at the top, we import our libraries and initiate the OpenAI API client. This client object is required to make API calls. 
Next, we have two helper functions. We have the get conversation history, and this is going to connect to our Neon database and pull the last few messages for a specific user. This is how the AI remembers. So we have our history, um, we have our, an array here, and then we are going to make the connection to the database, and then we have the query to select the user message and the AI response from conversations, and we put in the, the user ID and how many items from the database. Right now we have a limit of five. Then we execute it. We fetch all the data, and then we are going to append the data to our history. This is the chat history with the role of the role of the user, the content, the role of the assistant, the content. And basically this is recreating our previous chat from the history. And then we just close the connection and return the chat history. So it basically it recreates the chat history. We also have the save conversation function which does the opposite. After a new interaction, it connects to the database and saves the user's message and the AI response. So this is how the AI learns. So you can see we connect to the database and we're now inserting into the database the user ID, the user message, the AI response with these values. These are passed into the function here. Then we close that. Then we execute, commit, and close. Uh, we handle the errors and then finally close the connection. Then we have the main function, which is get AI response. This is where it all comes together. So this is going to get the user's new message. So first, it calls the get conversation history with the user ID to get the past content. Now it's going to bundle the history along with the new message into a format the AI can understand. Next, we are going, it's going to send all that to the OpenAI API using the cl client.chat.completions. So this is just pretty standard to use the OpenAI API. And then once it gets the response, we are going to get the content here. And it's, we're gonna call save conversation with the user ID, the user message, and the AI message. This is the response. And it's going to store it into memory. So it's basically a complete loop. Remember, respond, and learn. And then we just have this final thing where we uh, start the conversation. And while true, we get the user input. And with the input, we can get the AI response and it just does that remember, respond, learn the loop. Okay, we are ready to test it out. We have, the database is ready, the code is written, so let's run it and see our state-aware AI in action. So, I got my new terminal going. Stateful AI is ready, type exit to end the conversation. And I'll just tell it my favorite animal. My favorite animal is a cow. Cows are wonderful animals. And then it continues on here. I'll say, how do they sleep? They typically lie down to sleep. They're known to have short periods of deep sleep, usually lasting for about 30 minutes at a time, and so on. Okay, well, now for the real test. I'm going to stop the script, which if we didn't have the database, that should just delete everything. No nothing would normally be saved if we were just making a, a standard AI agent or standard AI chat. But now I will restart this and see if it keeps the memory here. So I'm gonna say, what is my favorite animal? Your favorite animal is a cow. And there it is, it remembered. So it's not just holding context and active memory, it's retrieving it from our Neon database. We successfully built a state-aware AI agent. And if I go over to Neon, and I'm going to refresh this, 
and now I can see our chat history. So the first message, my favorite animal is a cow. And we got the AI response here. And then the second message, the third me message, what is my favorite animal? We can see the response. And so now we can save our chat history in our chatbot. So to recap, we identified the problem of stateless AI, designed a memory structure, set up a serverless database with Neon, and demonstrated the Python code to create a continuous loop of remembering and learning. You can get the code in the description. Thanks for watching, and remember to use your code for good.